Hello, I'm Andrew Campbell, and this is David Smith, and we run the best mergers and acquisitions course in Europe. And the in the next few minutes, we're going to give you five tips that will make you a lot of money in acquisition deals. So listen up. Tip number one. Tip number one is about incremental value. Every deal needs to generate some extra dollars, some extra pounds, some extra euros from the combination of the two organizations. And I'm not talking here about 5% extra or 10% extra. A minimum of 50% extra. In fact, I don't really get excited until I can see 100% extra as a result of the combination. 200%, 300%, and you have really exciting deals. David, what do you think? Andrew, I couldn't agree more. I think I hear so often companies doing things for strategic reasons or to get into a new market, and they just don't seem to have remembered that the, the whole purpose of doing a deal is actually to create incremental value. So there is no increment. So the deals don't succeed. Right on the button. Now, tip number two, David. Tip number two. Tip number two is don't listen to your advisors, or if you do so, listen very selectively. The reason I say that is because most companies negotiate a fee with their advisors, which is contingent on the deal going ahead. So guess what? You get advisors who are motivated to do the deal, even if things begin to look a little bit sticky. Uh, so consequently, you have to be aware that the advisors are going to incline you to want to do the deal, even if in their heart of hearts they feel it's maybe not the right thing. So be very careful when you listen up to what they say. And uh, this is something that Warren Buffett, world's richest man, has, uh, has, has spotted. He came up with the idea that uh, every large deal should have a consultant um, working on the deal who only gets paid or only gets a bonus if the deal doesn't go through. So in the deal team, you've then got you know, the advisors who are all desperate to make the deal happen, and you've got somebody there who gets paid if it doesn't happen. A fascinating way, I must say. But Andrew, what is tip number three? Tip number three. Tip number three is about revenue synergies. The data is absolutely convincing. Deals that are driven primarily by revenue synergies, that's synergies that give extra sales as a result of the combination, extra sales from cross-selling, extra sales from having a, a stronger position in the marketplace, um, you know, extra sales from better utilization of technology. Deals that have extra sales perform better than deals that are driven primarily by cost savings. Um, so look out for the deals where the prime driver is revenue synergies. Uh, tip number three, David. Tip number four, even. Oh, tip number four. Okay, go for it. <laughs> tip number four is create an implementation plan and create it early. And make sure you know who is going to be involved in the implementation process. Because what you want to do is make sure that those people are also involved in the acquisition itself. The reason being, you want their fingerprints all over the acquisition plan so that they will then be uh, responsible for delivering on the deal later. What you're trying to build up here is commitment, and commitment comes when you buy into the process. Buying in and then being responsible for delivery is critical, and that's why I say create an implementation plan uh, and then and create it early and then make sure you get delivery on it. Tip number five, Andrew. Tip number five. Now, tip number five is another tip I've stolen from Warren Buffett. Um, margin for error. One of his great policies in making investment decisions is there should be a margin for error, that if things don't turn out as the paperwork suggests that they are, the deal still looks good. And this is true for acquisitions just as it is for investing in stocks and shares. If you find that you're scraping the barrel to generate enough synergies to justify the deal price, don't do it. Go back to bed. If you find that you, are, you know, haven't got the management that you would ideally like to have to lead the implementation process, cut off negotiations. Uh, you know, if you're not convinced that the other side are being completely straightforward with you um, and the deal's a tight one, don't do the deal. Unless you are com comfortable that the deal that you're doing is going to create lots of value and has room 
for it to be worse than you thought it was going to be, uh, you are chasing the wrong sort of deals. Most deals look much worse three years after than the day you close negotiations. Andrew, a great tip. And altogether, five great tips. But guess what? On our Making Successful Acquisitions program at the Ashridge Business School, we have got a whole lot more tips which we'd love to tell you. So what we'd like you to do is sign up for the program, come and hear us.